Well, it's a bit of a hike to get here, but the view is certainly worth it. This is Knocka Monument, and from up here you get a really good idea of just how Jordanstown fits in to the rest of the communities that stretch up the lock to Belfast. This monument was erected to remember the young men who lost their lives in two world wars. And today, on Father's Day, we remember those who never had the opportunity to become a father. And we also remember those who have lost loved ones this year and who today will have an empty seat in their home. This week across the country, school children have been busy secretly making cards and presents to give to their dads. This is a great picture. Tell me about your daddy with his lovely spiky hair here. He plays with me a lot and takes us swimming. And what's your favourite thing about your daddy? Because he gives me snuggles and kisses and hugs. I love daddy because he's very funny and he plays tickle monsters. Oh. So he chases us and then when he gets me and Katie, he tickles us. I like the look of this picture. Now tell me who's in this picture. Um, uh, that's me helping my dad fix my bike. And it, it, it was scared of flat, so we have the ginger new wheel. I also like playing pool. Oh, are you good? Yep. Who's better, you or your daddy? Both. <laughs> and what's he like, your dad? He kisses me and gives me a snuggle and gives me a story um, at bedtime, and I like that one because that's why he's the best daddy in the world. As we're here at school, it's a good chance for us to announce details of our next School Choir of the Year competition. We're looking for the best junior and senior school choirs to enter from right across the UK. And if you think your school choir has what it takes, then we would love to hear from you. You'll find all the details you will need to apply on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash songs of praise.
and you can even check out the standard your choir should aim for by watching clips of all of last year's finalists. When adult relationships end in separation or divorce, sometimes the children are not able to see their mum or dad because they no longer live in the family home. In these circumstances, it's places like this that can be a real lifeline, helping to maintain those important family ties. Contact Centre is basically where parents who no longer live with their children can come and have contact and develop relationships with them. And how important is it to keep those lines of communication open? Without contact centres there would be a lot of children simply not having the contact because the, uh, the contact here is a result of relationship breakdowns. How important is it to have a neutral environment for these families? The main reason they're here is because they haven't been able to come to an accommodation of where to meet. It's great because it gives the dads a chance to see their kids and we're all here for obvious reasons. She loves it down here. She's met loads of friends. It's basically a nursery school to her. Only with Daddy and Tom. Only with Daddy, yeah. <laughs> How important is it for you to keep up the contact with Emily? Well, it's very important because I was very close with Emily, you know, from the day she was born. You know, I, I've always been close to her. I look forward to Saturdays so much. Everybody looks forward to the weekend. But I look forward to Saturdays a lot more because I know that on a Friday night, I'm getting to see the child in the morning. Well, at Mother's Union one night, someone asked for more volunteers, and I thought, I could do this. A lot of these young fathers who are coming in, they have no experience with their children. I, as a grandparent, have had the experience of my own children and my grandchildren. We may have very young fathers who have never lived with a child and may need help or assistance with changing nappies or, or feeding or anything like that. On many occasions, the fathers are very nervous especially in the first visit. Once I tell her lunchtime, she puts on her coat and she knows straight away that it's picnic time to go outside and we have a picnic outside. No matter what the weather. No matter what the weather. Look at ham and cheese. Because I'm here every week, I can see the development of the relationships, you know, and I've yet to see a child who doesn't want to have contact with their other parent. And I suppose that's the most important bit, the fact that the child deserves to have a relationship with both parents, in spite of their relationship breakdown. And your faith, what role does that play in, in helping you perform your, your duties as a volunteer here? My faith is that the Lord is always here, He's kind of sitting on my shoulder and watching out for me. And I would like to think that because I have that faith, maybe I could be a help to them in some way. <laughs> I have heard so many songs Listen to a thousand tongues But there is one that sounds above them all The Father's song, the Father's love You sung it over me and for eternity it's written on my heart Heaven's perfect melody The Creator's symphony You are singing over me The Father's song Heaven's perfect mystery The King of love has sent for me and now you're singing over me the Father's song. I have heard so many songs, listened to a thousand tongues, but there is one that sounds above them all. The Father's song. The Father's love, you sung it over me and for eternity, it's written on my heart. Heaven's perfect melody, the Creator's symphony, 
you are singing over me the father's song heaven's perfect mystery the king of love has sent for me and now you're singing over me the father's song the father's song the father's love you sung it over me and for eternity it's written on my heart it's written on my heart 